tune in to uh, SABC3 Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as well as Monday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, and that's a TV series called I Am Women uh, Leap of Faith. And you'll see once again the former Deputy Minister of Health being interviewed there. Afternoon Talk uh-huh. on SAFM. It's been a rather eventful week, don't you think? Uh, Cabello in the spotlight a couple of days ago. Then we had uh, Natalie Dutour yesterday. And today it's the turn of uh, Nosizwe Madlala Rutledge, who is the, is the former Deputy Minister. She is the former Deputy Minister of uh, of Health as well as of Defence. Uh, what in fact we call a former Deputy Minister, I don't really know. We'll find out as we put her in the in the spotlight. So, former Deputy Minister, what should I call you? <laughs> I'm Nozizwe. Is it, is it just Nozizwe now? Yes. <laughs> and and you, you don't sort of step in to say, excuse me, you need to call me with a more formal title. No. You know, I actually uh, laugh at this because um, I see everywhere I go, um, former colleagues and colleagues in the political world like to be called honorable. Mm. But I think this has, <laughs> has to come from the people uh, calling you honorable than you calling yourself honorable. Yes, indeed. So, okay, so you're, you're just one, just, just your name. Okay, that's what it is. Well, great, great uh, for giving us the time to put you in the, in the spotlight. There's lots of things about you, and I'm going to invite people to call in, of course. Uh, 0891 if you want an SMS. That's two ends and SMS, two ends apiece. You can also tweet to me, Ashraf Garda1, and use the hashtag Afternoon Talk and comment on Facebook page. On the Facebook, there's a couple of comments there, which I will read uh, anyway. Well, what's the one thing about you? There's many things we know about you that are very much in the public domain. What's the one thing about you that you think is most misunderstood? Well, um, I'm just an ordinary uh, South African woman having the same concerns as other uh, women in South Africa, fear for my safety when I step into areas where there is high violence, um, but I'm um, just normal, just like anybody else. Yeah, but, but is there something about you that's misunderstood? That means, you know, we, we assume this about you, but in reality, you, you're not this. Um, no, I'm not aware what it is that might be misunderstood, but perhaps in our conversation, um, something will come up and maybe from the facebook messages i'm indeed really looking forward to hearing <laughs> what the broader south african indeed, public yeah, yeah. Um, has to say well i mean yesterday we had natalie Dutour and she said one of the things that people don't know is that she's actually quite shy so that that's an interesting one that uh, does uh, does come up right well what are you what are you occupying yourself with now well Work-wise, first yeah. first let me just uh, congratulate natalie to i really think she's an amazing woman and has uh, done our country proud I've, I've watched her success and her achievements. And um, if she says she's shy, um, well, she has shown her other qualities, which I think are greatly admired in South Africa. You asked what I'm up to now. Mm. I'm actually carrying on the same struggles, basically, that brought me into politics many, many years ago. I'm still very much involved with issues of human rights, issues of uh, women's rights, but now from outside of uh, formal politics. Mm. How, how do you feel, firstly, about, about in fact being out of politics? Because it's ironic, we're putting you in the spotlight, but uh, effectively you've been sort of out of the spotlight for, for quite a while. It, it's actually very interesting because um, having been there in politics, um, the responsibility kind, kind of remains with me to be able to um, present myself and to avail myself to people who maybe may be struggling to get in touch with this or that minister or maybe wanting some uh, help with understanding how government works so so basically i feel my uh, life continues as a as a as a person in politics even though i'm outside of it now but what i would like to perhaps emphasize is the fact that there is life after politics that is formal politics, because as I said, I continue, I continue to be involved in politics from a different uh, terrain. So I'm out here now with more time and more control of uh, what I do and what I say, and I love the freedom. But you, you're in, in your mindset, then, then you're still a politician. I'm still a politician. I think... Uh, like I said, what brought me into politics remains as long as there is uh, inequality, as long as there is injustice in the world, I'll continue to be a politician, maybe not uh, formally uh, as a profession, but uh, 
continuing to raise the issues and uh, going and participating in um, global platforms. I will be going at the end of next week to the uh, uh, Clinton Global Initiative, mm -hmm. uh, which is a huge gathering of world leaders looking at how to solve problems of poverty. And I'm looking forward to uh, listening to Jay Naidu and Maria Ramos, who have both been invited, who are going to be speaking there, because I'm interested to hear what uh, solutions they have. Indeed, so you've got a whole lot of heavyweight uh, South Africans there. Right, we're going to talk lots more, including, and you can think about this, when when, uh, when the layperson meets up with you as the former Deputy Minister of Health, what's the one question they ask you? And when other politicians meet up with you, what do they ask you as well? You think about that, don't answer me right away. We are chatting to, uh, well now, simply, straightforwardly, Nozizwe Madlala Rutledge. She's in the spotlight and we'll talk to you over the next uh, 45 minutes. So 891 if you have issues you want to pick up, but also if you, I'm just thinking, if you're related to her, just by chance if you are related, and you want to say hi to a, a family friend or cousin, uh, or even closer, that's also fine. What about if you're a politician and you want to pick up on something as well, that's absolutely fine as well. Otherwise, there may be some issues that you've always wanted to ask her, maybe even five or ten years ago, well, here's your chance to do that. My name is Ashraf Garda, and this is the Afternoon Talk Show. What? What? They asked. <laughs> this guy crazy. is crazy. They said. Too risky. Too risky. Yeah. Maybe it's gonna work. They <laughs> shouted. <sighs> okay. He sighed. No, you're right, you're right. He nodded. I mean, a movie about aliens in Soweto. <laughs> what was I thinking? Imagine no one believed they could be more. At DSTV, we know that everyone has the ability to be more, to dream more, to achieve more. We're passionate about helping young South Africans to realize their potential. Through our film training program, we are giving young aspiring filmmakers the chance to reach their dreams, while at the same time helping to grow our local film industry. Be more. A DSTV initiative. It's decision time for Alicia. Will she hook up with Will or will she make it up with hubby Peter? Will she or won't she? Peter's ready to make a new start. He still wants Alicia after all he's put her through, but Will wants her too. So, who will Alicia end up with? Will it be Peter or will it be Will? All questions to be answered in the new season of The Good Wife, Tuesdays at 9, only on SABC3. A South African first from ABSA, introducing value bundles, the silver, gold or platinum transaction account, where the more products you add, the more you save on your fees. Save even more by adding a home loan. And if your spouse gets a value bundle, they'll save 50% on their monthly fees. You also get free unlimited card swipes and free electronic banking. And you'll never pay out of bundle penalty fees. If you really believe in better banking, SMS bundles to 31513 to see what your value bundle could be. APSA. Today, tomorrow, together. Standard SMS rates and conditions apply. An authorized financial services and registered credit provider. Afternoon talk uh -huh. on SAFM. Right, so Nozizwe Madlala Rutledge uh, is with me in the spotlight, former Deputy Minister of Health, also before that, uh, Deputy Minister of uh, Defence as well. So some interesting portfolios. Uh, but now just plain Jane, uh, Nozizwe Madlala Rutledge, but uh, involved in what, the, the embrace, I'm going to get to the callers now, the Embrace Dignity Campaign. What, what, what is that more specifically? Um, embrace Dignity um, has actually evolved from a campaign we ran in 2010 when South Africa was hosting the FIFA Soccer World Cup to raise awareness about human trafficking for sexual exploitation. But we have now registered an NGO with the government called Embrace Dignity to advocate for a law in South Africa that uh, recognizes prostitution as harmful to women and society. So basically that that's what I'm doing. I'm working uh, with um, others to have the law uh, reviewed uh, as part of the process of the Law Reform Commission. As you know, a government has set up the Law Reform Commission to look at various options in particular. There are four that the Law Reform Commission is looking at. One is to leave the status quo, which is criminalization of both the selling and the buying of uh, sex. The other one is, uh, that one is called total decriminalization. And then there's uh, another one, which is legalization, basically allowing it to happen in certain designated zones. The third option is total decriminalization, which 
actually says that it's allowed to happen without the police or the um, criminal justice system coming into it. What we are supporting is the fourth option, which is partial decriminalization, where you um, recognize the fact that many women who uh, enter the sex industry do so not out of choice, but because of their economic circumstances. Many of them are doing it for survival, but also recognizing the fact that there is inequality between men and women. And because of this power inequality, it is therefore important to treat women differently from those who are exercising their power and choice by buying women. So okay. that is what I'm working with. We are also supporting women who are wanting to exit prostitution. We are supporting them with a training as well as uh, the training that we provide is in job skills. It's also in uh, self-image so that and, and also supporting them to find alternative employment. Okay. But we are doing this uh, really as a pilot to show that it is possible for people to leave uh, the industry and also to indicate that there are many women who are out there who want to find alternative employment but who can't uh, exit and we're assisting them to to do this and okay. to show that it is possible right we'll pick up on some of those social issues that uh, that take up your time and certainly are part of your conscience we'll do that in a second let's pick up the callers now uh zingisani in germiston hi hi ashraf yes. and uh, good afternoon to the former minister good Thank afternoon you, Mr. good Thank afternoon you. zingisani just two questions the first one, I want to understand from the Deputy Minister uh, the decision by former President uh, Tabombeki to remove her from the cabinet. Was it a reflection of DIPA issues or it was mainly based on the fact that she took the trip without the authorization? Secondly, I want to understand from her what did that mean for her broadly in terms of the objectives of serving the, the people of South Africa. Okay, let's get. I thought that question will come up. Thank you so much for that one there. Uh, okay, let, let's let's get that. I'm going to come to Solly in just a second. Of course, you have to answer that question. Let's go for that. Um, thank you, Zingisani, for for your question. Of course, this is um, an event in my past. I do want to emphasize uh, that I've now uh, moved on and I'm absolutely grateful that we now have an administration in South Africa that recognizes that there's a role for ARVs in treating people with HIV, especially when they reach that point when their immune systems have broken down. So there is no conflict anymore between government and the people in relation to this issue. But um, of course, the former president, President Mbegi, was exercising his uh, authority, which is granted to him by the constitution. He had um, appointed me and he, has the, he had the power to remove me. But your question is whether they were, it was a reflection of deeper issues or was the trip uh, just a smokescreen? I do think that the trip to Madrid, uh, for which I was said not to have received authorization, was actually a smoke screen. I did get um, uh, assurance from my office and from the presidency that in fact I did have permission. When this matter came up, I immediately returned from my trip uh, because I would not have in any way wanted to disrespect authority of the president. But uh, there were deeper issues, issues around the whole approach to HIV mm. AIDS and the issue around uh, treatment of people with uh, HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. were, you, were you surprised that you in fact were sacked? No, actually I wasn't surprised, I saw it coming. Um, I did not precipitate the uh, decision of the president. I, was, I found myself in a situation where I was questioning myself uh, every day to say what really is my role in this position, having been entrusted, as Zingisani has said, to uh, serve the people, when in fact all I was doing was getting up every day, getting my bodyguards to take me to work in a state car, and I wasn't really able to make any difference. In the meantime, 
I was aware that people were dying unnecessarily. I was aware that babies were dying unnecessarily. So it was a matter of conscience. Mm -hmm. would, where, you, would you have quit anyway? I did not consider uh, quitting, but if it had reached that point where I thought it was no longer possible for me to work within the government, I think I would have done that. In fact, I was given the opportunity by the president to resign, but I did not take that opportunity because he was offering it as a way for me to uh, kind of say I've done wrong, therefore I wish to be excused mm -hmm. from, from my position. So because of that, I felt that it would not be right for me to, to resign as he was um, advising me to do. So, so if he's listening now, what would, you, what would you like to tell him? Well, to start with, I think he's still a comrade of mine. I have been following what he's doing in Africa, and I think uh, it's important what he's doing uh, over there. I don't hold anything against him. But there was that uh, time which... Um, I think I would write a book about a nail-biting time for me when he had um, exercised his authority but was further wanting the ANC to discipline me. Those days were really um, a difficult time for me because I did not think what I had done mm, actually mm. Ought, had violated ANC policy. And I was absolutely delighted when that matter was resolved in the way that it was. And it actually confirmed my own belief in the human spirit as well as uh, human justice. Mm. But, uh, but, but on a, on a personal level, and I'll get to the other callers in just a second, Zizi as well. I think Solly is gone, but Zizi is just stay on the line. I'll come to you in a minute. On, on a personal level, how, how did you feel about the fact that here you are, you sort of schooled in the ANC, this is where you spend your time, and you're being told effectively by the president that, that I don't want you for whatever reason. For, we understand that you differ, you differ on the issues of, um, of ARVs, but w whatever that may well be, the very fact is basically saying, um, I don't want you. You're just not. You're not. You're not good enough for me anymore. How did you feel about that? Knowing that effectively at that point in time, you sort of were shut out of, of whatever other ANC ambitions you may have had. Honestly, I think what I felt at that time was that he was making a huge mistake, because I think I had uh, contact with uh, people out there and I knew exactly how they were feeling. I was rather surprised though with the uh, uh, size of the. Uh, response from from the public as far as the ANC is concerned I did not really feel like he was uh, succeeding to have me kicked out because I knew that within the ANC there were people who were strongly uh, supportive of me and that's why in fact in Bulugwane I was elected uh, to onto the National Executive Committee of the, of the ANC and got uh, quite a number of votes from uh, the delegates so that didn't really worry me too much that he was at that time exercising his authority. Indeed. All right, let's get uh, to the callers. Uh, Zizi in Joburg. Hi. Hello. Hi, Zizi. Yes, thank you, Ashok, for taking my call. Pleasure. I just got to compliment uh, the Deputy Minister. It's one of those people, I'm a former exile, actually, in the US and the, and the UK. Uh, one of the 76 student uprisings scoring. Um, actually, she's one person that really inspires me. But I've been struggling to get hold of her. Can she? I need to talk to her with a lot of things because I know she stands for justice. I think this is what the mission I'm here on this earth for. I want to get in touch with her. All right, uh, let's get a response. Uh, stay on the line. Quick response there. Thank you, Zizi. And yes. actually, also, I want to appreciate what you have done because that 76th generation and what they did for our country needs mm -hmm. always to be remembered. Um, I am available. I really like uh, meeting people and uh, supporting them in their dreams and in what they want mm -hmm. to do. So I can uh, give Ashraf my number and you can contact me. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll keep your details uh, at the end. Maybe just email me, uh, Zizi, ashraf at safm .co.za, ashraf at safm .coza, and uh, we'll connect you. Otherwise, just stay on the line, and uh, we'll, we'll get, uh, I'll get uh, my producer to, uh, to take your details as well. Did you want can, to say something else? Can yeah? I just ask Zizi a yeah. question? Um, Zizi, are you, uh, you're obviously a woman. Are you? Zizi, hi. Oh, she's gone. Okay, Zizi's gone. I, Zizi, I, yeah. I truly... Um, 
want to make myself available to support uh, women leaders. In fact, that's some of the things, and when I say leaders, I mean leading in whatever way you are, whether you are in your house trying to change things for for your girls, uh, for your daughters, I'm really available to help to support you with that. And whether it's in the community or in different issues of uh, changing women's lives. Mm. All right, let's uh, let's uh, move on uh, now. Just uh, and I don't want to dwell on the issue of uh, former President Thabo Mbeki, but uh, when then he was recalled, how, how did you feel about it? Oh, I <laughs> maybe <laughs> I, maybe I think you should put my mother on the line because <laughs> uh, my mother actually is a very straightforward person, and for uh-huh. her it was okay. Uh, there, there's a, a Zulu expression actually uh, to that effect about how. In what you do to others comes back to to haunt you. Mm-hmm. I did not celebrate uh, his r- removal. I did think it was a, a time of difficulty in our country when we had to manage this whole process. And I do appreciate that it was managed very responsibly and very uh, the transition was smooth uh, from uh, uh, former President Beggy to former President M- Mutlante. All right, so so no, uh, I mean, you you didn't uh, dwell on that, but but now, uh, just a quick thought in terms of uh, if you had the chance to to meet the president, that's President Zuma, what would you put on the agenda? Well, what I would uh, put on the agenda, I actually would love to have a meeting with President Zuma. I must mention that uh, although I have his cell number, it's very difficult to get hold of him which is actually part of the problem I have with him uh, making his cell number available to everybody because then it makes it very difficult to, to reach him. But um, when if I do see him, I would like to talk to him about the serious uh, crisis we are in in South Africa, a crisis of leadership. We have a, a problem when it comes to, um, in fact, in a number of different uh, sectors, in our country, which uh, includes political parties. I think when it comes to political parties, there are problems of internal democracy and uh, people contesting in a destructive and violent way for positions within political parties, including my own, the, the ANC. A crisis of leadership in parliament. I think parliament is a very important uh, institution uh, as the legislative arm of government not exercising its responsibility of oversight. And I know that there are shortcomings in Parliament, but I think leadership in Parliament must take responsibility and not blame the officials. There's also the issue in business. I think business in South Africa has to take huge responsibility for some of the difficulties we experience right now with with strikes. For example, uh, the whole issue of exorbitant salaries to executives and, and their bonuses in business at the expense of workers. I mean, if you look at uh, the mining sector right now, mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. the workers at Marikana are asking for 12,500 rand a month is really a pittance compared to some of the salaries that the union bosses are getting, as well as the salaries of those executives and the okay. bonuses they pay themselves. Do you, do you think quickly that, uh, and I want to get to Kristen and, and Navarro in just a second, do you think quickly that, that in fact, South Africa is going off the rail? I wouldn't say South Africa is going off the rails, but there is quite a serious danger that we may be going downhill. Uh, I travel a lot. Uh, well, in my present position, I have an opportunity to meet people from other parts of the country, of the world, and they are raising concerns about uh, South Africa and the the problem of uh, economic inequality and the resultant problems that go with that. I mean, if we look at the service delivery uh, protests out there, the issues right now of of strikes in the mining sector, all these are symptoms of problems in that are not being uh, addressed urgently enough in our country. So these are some of the issues that I would like uh, to raise with uh, with President Zuma. I would also ask uh, President Zuma what his own program is for ensuring that women do do rise in in leadership and particularly in leadership of our party, the ANC. I would like 
to hear from him if he has a program of uh, having a woman as president of our country. Mm -hmm. I think right now, having had a hundred years of, le of male leadership in the ANC, we need to see leaders of the ANC, especially male leaders, saying they're prepared to step aside and allow women to, to lead the organization. Okay, we'll pick up on that. We are chatting to the uh, former Deputy Minister of Health, uh, Nozizwe Madlala Rutledge, who's now just plain Nozizwe for now because very much out of uh, formal politics, but certainly very much a politician. Anyway, 891 as we put her in the spotlight. I've probably got time for two, three calls. I'll do that in a few minutes' time. Let's get the news headlines now. It's 3.30. Thanks, Ashraf. Good afternoon. Police Union SAPU has called on SAPS management to provide psychological and moral support to officers who were involved in the Marikana shootings in Northwest. The union says the officers are traumatized by the incident. Unions have poured cold water on reports that striking miners have rejected a wage offer by platinum giant Lon Min outright. AMCO National Treasurer Jimmy Gama says they are still receiving feedback on the offer. And Muslim demonstrators furious at a film they say insults the Prophet Muhammad have clashed with police near the U.S. Embassy in Cairo before a nationwide protest called by the Muslim Brotherhood. Protesters also clashed with police in Yemen where one person died and 15 were injured when the U.S. Embassy compound was stormed. These are the news headlines here on SFM. I'm Asanda Matsaunyane. Details at 4. Back to you, Ashraf. Thanks for that. Right, we continue chatting to uh, Nozizwe Madlala Rutledge uh, in the next minute, but let's get to uh, PM Live, hosted by uh, Tepiso Makweta. What's up on the show today? Well, government's saying that it will not declare a state of emergency due to developments in the mining sector. It says, though, it will crack down on the increase in violence, threats and intimidation around the mining sector. This says the National Union of Mine Workers confirms that the offer made by Lonmin is far below the current 12,500 rand a month demand by striking workers and that it's been rejected. Samu Mienha to hold a briefing to uh, present a detailed report on corruption and the state of service delivery in Limpopo. In other news, Zimbabwean Prime Minister Morgan Tsvangirai vowing to go ahead with his planned wedding this weekend despite attempts by two women, one of them South African, to stop him from tying the knot. So lots of variety, Ashraf. I'm sure you can hear from uh, 46. Indeed, every reason to stay tuned to PM Live. Thanks for that. Enjoy the weekend as well. Some of the SMSs we've had uh, regarding my guest, uh, Nazizwe Madlala Rutledge, uh, is, uh, Ashraf, you're, you're focusing on the same issues. Let me just pick up on those there. Referring to Tabo Mbeki, former president, uh, you're not helping anyone. She's involved in constructive issues, and we're very interested in those. I'm not sure whether it's only that. Uh, actually, the response was to some callers, by the way. Ashraf, who are you interviewing? I've been listening for five minutes. Okay, well, now you know, hopefully. The says, please help us farmers in Escort from illegally evicting blacks and desecrating graves. Come from Sipo. Uh, do you think the leadership has met with most of the resolutions of Polakwani from Kenya? Interesting one. Will you, now, will you now admit that the ANC is a corrupt party led by greedy, by greedy leaders uh, who care more about their pockets? Or you think Zuma and uh, Mantasha are wrong? Uh, to say corruption is rampant from Tao. So they want lots of... Can okay, we read a couple more that we can answer them in one go? Would you now... Um, another one, does government... Okay, this one's all very short here. I'm not going to go through that. Just, just respond to those starting from the last one. Which is about corruption. Yeah. Would you now admit that the, that the ANC is corrupt, according to, to that, uh, to that uh, caller or listener? No, I don't think the ANC is corrupt. They are... Uh, worrying um, uh, uh, incidences in our country of corruption and the ANC I think needs to step up its own uh, program to fight corruption just like I think the government need to step up its uh, fight against corruption. I think corruption is something that all of us uh, must uh, stand up against. Uh, they, it takes two people or more to be corrupt. So both the corrupter and the corrupted need to be, uh, that issue needs to be uh, addressed. Within the ANC, I think there's a very clear set of values uh, which have guided the ANC from its uh, start in uh, more than 100 years ago. And I've um, read um, a number of papers written by the Deputy President Halima Montlante where he's reminding the ANC to go back to these values. So I wouldn't say 
it's the organization that's uh, a problem, but it's individuals within the organization. I think there is a problem where people see the ANC as uh, uh, an organization for their own personal ambitions, where they see a possibility for them to rise and to um, line their pockets. There are people like that, and I think it's for the ANC to guard against such people, and that's why, for me, this whole issue of contestation for leadership within the ANC has to be scrutinized very closely by the ANC because I find that it's starting to attract individuals who do not carry the history and the legacy of the ANC or the values that uh, made the ANC this organization that we joined, that I joined as a young woman and that many, many people have died for. Indeed. Okay. So like uh, Jay Naidu has reminded Kosatu at this important time to go back to the basics in terms of its values, I would say the, the same to the ANC as we go towards Mangawung. I think it's important that we stay focused, otherwise we're going to lose the support of the many, many South Africans who support the ANC and make it the majority party that it is in Parliament. Okay, I'll run through. Uh, Philip uh, tweeting saying, or rather Facebooking, I admire that activist, a former Deputy Minister. I salute her for her stance on ARVs. Right, let's run through three callers, probably the last three I can take. I'll do them in one go. Uh, Nivari in, uh, in Nelspreet, hi. Hey, good day, Afra and uh, deputy, former Deputy Minister. Good day. I just want to perhaps correct one thing. I think uh, in terms of the Afghan law, deputy ministers are not members of cabinet. So I don't think uh, Comrade Nasiso was ever part of, of the cabinet. That's one thing that I want to correct. Secondly is that I want her to explain to us, not in, in, in passing, what is it exactly that has differed with, uh, with regard to the policy of HIV? Because in terms of our knowledge, our government under the leadership of Tawam Begi is the one that has spent more money on ARV than any other government Southern African development community. So what is it that she has differed with in the policy of government that made her to feel like there were some other issues that need to be dealt with in the ANC policy and in government? Okay. Lastly, lastly yeah. she, she was the uh, Deputy Minister of Defense. And in terms of the card that Comrade Hadmam Tlande gave at that time, is that the president of the ANC have complained about the same matter with regard to her in defense and in health. Was it a matter of the president or was it a matter of her not working on a collective basis in terms of what the ANC wants people okay. to work on? Nevali got because that. Because she was moved okay. from defense to health and still do the same thing. Okay. Nevali, Thank I'm going to move on purely because time is against us. I need Noxizu uh, Madlala uh, Rutledge to answer all those things. And we just have about eight minutes to go. And I need to get to some other issues too. Talo, quick one from uh, Bramfontein. Hi. Uh, actually, it's Brian Stenai. Brian Stenai, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, I've just got qu two quick questions for the uh, for my minister. Um, firstly, it seems like um, most uh, individuals who are now active members of the, the ruling party or any other party uh, do not seem to come out honestly about issues that are affecting South Africans, but immediately they are kicked out or else move out somehow. Then they come out, you know, to say this is what is happening. I need to know if maybe there is something that is uh, st stopping them while they are active members of those parties or else holding higher positions okay. to actually open up about it. All right, got that. Anybody wants to ask a very personal question? It's about career, certainly fine. Kristen in uh, Nelspreet, hi. Uh, good afternoon, uh, and to Naziz were as well. Um, I, I, I think the stance that you've been taking is really a kind of beacon for the kind of leadership that, that needs to emerge more strongly. Um, I've got a feeling that we've been under a kind of anesthesia over a number of years. Um, and Malakan has woken us up to the nature of the problem. We do have to cherish the kind of leaders that we do have who are articulating the kind of values and, and the principles that Nazir has been articulating. And I, I think the problem is not that everything is totally wrong with the government. I mean, just look at the position now on HIV. I mean, this is a very, very soundly based, well worked out position, and I think it's fantastic. We need more of that. Thank you. Okay, got, uh, got that one right. Just a quick response to, to all those uh, questions. Thank you very much. And I'll start with the last one. I truly appreciate what you have said about uh, leadership and Anastasia. I think in our country, it's very important that we should all be very aware of the hardships that people experience on a daily basis and not have this Anastasia, which is about stopping to feel because I think in the first place what brought us into the struggle was exactly that, that we're feeling the pain uh, of our people. Now in terms of uh, escort and the farmers, uh, I actually think this is a very important issue for uh, especially the provincial government in Guazulu Natal to follow up. 
when I was Deputy Minister of Defence, and in a way that touches on the person who asked the question about why I was removed from mm, defence. Mm, mm. Not that I know, I don't think I was removed as such from defence, but anyway, when I was Deputy Minister of Defence, um, I did indeed address this issue of uh, tensions between farmers and uh, communities. And as you know, there's a book also that's uh, written by Steinbeck, which uh, goes deep into this issue, uh, dealing with the whole uh, history uh, around land dispossession and uh, the relationships right now between those who have the land, the farmers, and those who are landless, who are the communities. And I think the government is trying to address this issue, but the process is very, very slow of handing the land back to the people. And I know the issue of graves is very, very important for many people in our communities because this is the history. These are the people who brought you to this world. So taking care of the graves, when you see that them being desecrated, that's, that's a huge problem. In terms of South African law, indeed, uh, deputy ministers are not members of the cabinet, but they are full members of the executive and have uh, powers that are designated to them uh, when the president appoints them. Uh, he or she uh, instructs ministers to um, uh, pass on some of these responsibilities to their deputy ministers. Um, the issue around HIV uh, was not on policy. I think our policy in South Africa was sound at the time when uh, dept when our former president had, had stopped questioning the link between HIV, at least publicly. I think he, he himself acknowledges this, that he was advised and he took the advice to stop questioning the link between HIV and AIDS. But in practice, in practice, and I was right inside the Ministry of Health, this policy was being undermined daily in the ministry. I was there. So it wasn't about me want, being a, a lone ranger, as the pr former president said. It was about seeing a situation where policy says ARVs uh, do play a role and they do, make, uh, they do prolong people's lives. But when going to the hospitals out here, nurses saying that were being disciplined, the doctors were being disciplined who were distributing ARVs. So there was obviously a contradiction between implementation of policy and what the policy itself mm, said. Mm, mm, so mm. I don't have a problem at all. I don't uh, feel that I did anything wrong. I wasn't removed from the defense ministry, as he, it seems he suggests. I actually f uh, f still feel very close to uh, the Department of Defense because this is one area where I really felt I was able to uh, play a very important role, for example, in the area of skills development for the youth. I also introduced the uh, peace table where I was encouraging women in defense to look at uh, peace from a gender lens. Mm. Uh, the, the, the president decides every now and then to put somebody in one portfolio. I did not understand that I was being removed from defense when I was being okay. appointed I wanna, Deputy Minister of let Health. Me, let me ask you very quickly then, we've got about two and a half minutes to go, so I'm going to get into some personal issues, but just on the issue of health, right? Just a very quick answer. Uh, around the issue uh, around uh, the, the hospital in Feral all those years ago where you spoke about it as a national emergency. Do, do you think now the state of health is, uh, uh, we have a national emergency with regard to health. Keeping in mind, just a couple of days ago at Krasani Badaguan, once again, uh, doctors had to operate or surgeons had to operate with the a, with a light of a cell phone because of power failures. Yeah, that's um, actually said. What is different between now and then when I was in the ministry is that Minister Aaron Mutsaledi acknowledges the problem. I think that's the first point, and it's very important that somebody at that level acknowledges that there is a problem. I think he's uh, doing um, his level best to try and get health back on its feet. It's a huge problem. I mean, the Department of Health is a very big um, organization and the problems range from a lack of uh, skilled workers, from a lack of, I suppose in terms of the budget, the problems have centered largely around management and he has uh, addressed, uh, tried to address that issue, mm -hmm. where previously people with no training, medical training, or, or training in managing huge budgets were actually given this responsibility to be hospital managers. Okay. And that's one of the points and, that and uh, a, he has addressed. There's a big difference. Right, just in, to 
in, of, yeah, carry on in, Frey, in Frey Hospital, for example, that I visited and I said there was a national emergency, I found a situation where there was, a, you know, totally unacceptable uh, poor management where easily people could have uh, provided the basic necessities to ensure that proper care is provided. I, I, the, the, the whole issue of a nurse running across the street to go and get an incubator for a baby that's dying in her hands, that mm, can't be mm, acceptable. Absolutely. Okay, we've got about 45 seconds to go, and if we cross that, that will be a, a national emergency. So quick ones. Uh, a book you'd recommend we must read and a quote that you'd love to share. Well, I'm reading a very... Uh, important book and I would recommend that everybody reads it. It's called Half the Sky, How to Change the World. It's written by Nicholas Christoph and Cheryl uh, Wooden. I think that's the right pronunci okay. pronunciation. Half, half the Sky, How to Change the World. Half okay. the Sky, yes. Right. And, and a quick quote that we can take home with? Um, never give up. Um, basically it's about if you fall, get up again and carry on with what you believe. All right. La right. Just lastly, since you're never giving up, if you asked to get back into into the cabinet in whatever form, would you would you accept? Uh, right now, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I think it's a very important role. I think there are different uh, terrains at which we can wage uh, the same struggle, but uh, it will depend um, if there is an invitation and if I think I can play a role, I will s accept. And that invitation may well just come. Well, it's been great chatting to you. Uh, that's Nosizwe Madlala Rutledge. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. By the way, people can also tune in to uh, SABC3 Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as well as Monday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, and that's a TV series called I Am Women uh, Leap of Faith. And you'll see once again the former Deputy Minister of Health being interviewed there. Afternoon Talk uh -huh. on SAFM.